Oh, well, boy, it's dark. It's uh, August 26th, strolling, and I'm really excited because I finally got a chance to listen to this newest Julia Jacqueline record, Pre Pleasure. Julia Jacqueline is a singer, songwriter and guitarist raised in the Blue Mountains region of Australia and Pre Pleasure is her third full-length solo studio album. It is one of the releases that I have been most excited about for this year and that is because it is a follow-up to the 2019 record Crushing, a highly acclaimed effort that I would probably count amongst the shortlist of some of my favourite few discoveries musically of the past few years. For me it is a uniquely tender and moving breakup album that for 10 tracks turbulently runs through the kind of usual post-relationship viscera but does so with a bunch of really memorable anecdotes, with a bunch of thought-provoking interesting takes and with a ton of wonderful musical moments that really showcase Julia's great abilities as a vocalist but also her abilities to just craft really interesting, vibrant and emotionally charged songs. And on this record I am happy to say that Julia largely follows through with a collection of songs that definitely repeats and replicates some of the best parts of her past work whilst also delivering things that feel new and feel fresh. And that starts right from the first track here and the first teaser track from this record as well, Lydia Wears a Cross, a song which utilises these droning repetitive piano chords and a very kind of plain sterile drum machine pattern to explore Julia's childhood experiences attending a Catholic school. Catholic school. Yeah. The song is, as I sort of described, musically very simple and very basic as it first begins, but that just really helps to bring attention to the lyrics here, which right off the bat are some of the best and some of the most memorable and punchy on this entire album. On the verses in particular, I don't exactly know how to describe it, but it just feels like every syllable, every rhyme, every word choice feels like it's really been thought about and perfectly placed as Julia reflects on her disillusionment with organised religion, the confusion that comes with participating in these rituals and these ceremonies that you might not really understand as a younger child, um, and also on the feeling that you kind of have to participate in these things in order to stay out of trouble and to fit in in that kind of school environment. The track also does end up actually finishing very strongly as new musical elements are gradually added in. A mournful descending guitar line, then a somewhat sunnier piano arpeggio, some busier drum rhythms and also these really nice touches of vocal harmony that just kind of help to elevate the whole vocal performance as the song reaches its big conclusion. I actually found that happening quite a lot on this record. Julia doesn't really, um, I don't know, shall we say, she doesn't really rock out with her vocal style. Um, you know, there isn't really a smidge of a growl or any grit in most of her vocal performances, and that's, you know, absolutely fine. But even on songs on this record like I Was Neon and Be Careful With Yourself, which are really dominated by these kind of crunchy electric guitars, where you might imagine that the vocal performance would need to be a bit grittier, Julia definitely always manages to cut through, and it's really just by adding these really nice layers of vocal harmonies, which definitely help to make her performances stronger, sound bolder, sound more emotionally interesting, and don't allow her to get washed out in any of these bigger moments. And that gradual musical build-up that we hear on the opener is also a common characteristic of a number of the songs on this album. On Love Try Not To Let Go, the second track here, we once again start from a kind of simple piano-dominated instrumental, add in some touches of wearing electric guitars on the verses too, and then the chorus hits, and it's just something completely different as we hear this really blocky, compressed mixture of really loud kick drums, some chugging guitars as well, and Julia delivers this short-lived but really wonderful vocal moment as she repeats the title phrase, kind of reaches for some of those high notes, just about manages to fight through the really sludgy, compressed mess of an instrumental that almost threatens to kind of engulf the whole thing, and she really sticks the landing perfectly. 
Then we have track three, Ignore Tenderness, which is another one that starts with a decidedly tame, uh, this time guitar-based instrumental, matched really well by Julia's kind of blunt, semi-spoken vocal delivery. And then the chorus comes in, and this song just blossoms into something entirely unexpected. Every time this hook starts, I am just like astounded by how, you know, pretty, how, how beautiful it sounds, especially in comparison to the kind of sparse, uh, plain sounding verses. You know, everything just comes in, the chimes, the beautiful string instrumentation that comes in on the second chorus. It's just such a great moment on this record. Ignore Tenderness is also one of the best examples here of Julia's willingness to just bring an intense vulnerability into her lyrics, as she forthrightly covers topics like personal intimacy or lack thereof, and also how her past and how her education influences her sexuality currently, which does seem to kind of link into an overall theme here as well. Track 5, I'm Too In Love To Die, is another one that I find to be lyrically just really rich and really thought-provoking. I'm too in love to die. As of now, um, on my fourth listen of this record, I still can't quite manage to listen to this song the whole way through, you know, without tearing up. The song focuses in on fears of a happy relationship being interrupted by sudden death um, and appeals to this kind of fantasy Hollywood movie idea of being able to save things with the power of love. Of course, it's laid out a lot more elegantly than that in the actual song, uh, but because this idea um, that love is kind of the be all and end all, the solution to all problems no matter what, because that idea is a concocted falsehood, the optimistic lyrics here are juxtaposed with the backing of this really gloomy organ that you could kind of imagine soundtracking a funeral scene. I imagine that's probably a deliberate choice because death <laughs> could unexpectedly just ruin your happy little moments at any time. Also, the vocal melodies here are actually just really pretty. Be Careful With Yourself is another song that is kind of preoccupied with the fear of death and with death as an obstacle to future happiness, as Julia attempts to make sure that her partner avoids the sort of, you know, mundane everyday things that could result in a heartbreaking future without them. You know, it's things like, you know, please, if you could, could you stop smoking? Um, you know, could you make sure you stick to the speed limit when you're driving? You know, let's make sure we keep our doctor's appointments. Let's have those regular checkups, make sure everything's okay. Which is, it's kind of just a really sweet idea. And there's also a real triumphant sound to this song that kind of conjures up this really happy suburban future. I think because it just feels like such a moment of personal clarity where Julia realises, you know, this person, I've seen enough, I've, I've been with this person for long enough and I've realised that they are the one that I want to spend the rest of my life with, that I don't really want to go on without and therefore that is why it is so important that we carry on living so that, you know, we can have this happy future together. Now, as we get into the second half of this record, as we have been doing, there are some songs that I can't quite heap as much praise on. For example, track six, Less of a Stranger, begins as a limping acoustic guitar number, but unlike much of the material that we've already discussed, it just doesn't really build to anything more at any point. And even when I accept that musically, the song is pretty simple, and for me, it's pretty unremarkable, and I just try to kind of focus in on the lyrics and enjoy those, I still don't really find anything that is interesting, that is really worth talking about, or at least maybe, I just don't really hear anything that I can really connect with very much. Lyrically, I do think there is something to be gleaned and, and, and you know, worth listening to on some of these tracks that I don't care for as much, like Less of a Stranger and uh, Track 8, Magic as well. But really, they are just let down by songwriting that just really isn't all that interesting. Magic is really the song that I have come to see as the worst track on this record. The lyrics actually are a little intriguing, there's something to be interested in there, but the song itself just trudges along as this kind of mirror image of some of the earlier tracks on the record, with this simple and plain, and I would say bland instrumental, some really repetitive, simple lead melodies, and it, you know, it brings with it all the qualities that you would expect with those things, making the track just a listless, lazing grind to get through.
that really brings down the second half of this record for me. Thankfully, there are still great moments to be had on this album. I'm not always entirely sure what Moviegoer is really getting at with its kind of misty-eyed nostalgia, but everything here is just presented so stylishly, with these really nice lush electric guitar chords and Julia's really delicate vocals that are kind of vibrato-tinged, just bringing us one of the best, most hypnotising tracks on this album. And I also really appreciate that Pre-Pleasure does go out swinging with a closing track, End of a Friendship, that gives us another gorgeous string arrangement, a really heartfelt, beautiful vocal performance, and also quite a noisy guitar solo at the end of this song that really just is completely unexpected, absolutely tops the whole thing off. So I think I'm on my final kind of long walk uh, with this record now. It must be, you know, at least the 15th, uh, you know, maybe getting closer to 20th time that I listen to this record now. I feel like I've just been listening to this record kind of a lot, you know, for the better part of a month. And so I'm just excited to kind of spend a full afternoon getting all the thoughts together, writing everything up into a script and uh, kind of, you know, putting this record on the shelf, you know, for at least a few weeks because uh, listening to it, yeah, you know, it has been a lot. Pre-Pleasure is a record that I am really satisfied with. Uh, a lot of the best things about Julia's past work definitely carry over onto this new album, uh, but there are also certainly a bunch of new things tried. Um, a bunch of new ideas, new topics, new sounds tried out here. This album, I think, does feel a little more produced, um, maybe, you know, a little more high budget, especially when you're hearing some of those bigger moments, especially some of those gorgeous string arrangements. But of course, that is by no means a bad thing. And I think you still do get a lot of the intimacy, a lot of the really wonderful, vulnerable introspection that has made Julia such a great artist in the past. I, of course, didn't love every single moment on this record, as I already explained explained, but even those tracks that I didn't love, they definitely warranted repeat listens, they definitely gave me things to think about and reflect on, and you know, this is the kind of album where I can imagine listening to it for definitely, you know, months, maybe years to come, and I can certainly imagine that, you know, the kind of ranking of my favourite tracks and my least favourite tracks on this record could certainly change. And I also appreciate that this record does seem to have a bit of a theme running throughout as well, although it doesn't stick to one topic or one concept quite as closely as Crushing did, this record does definitely seem to have a lot on it about Julia's past, about how that past informs her present self and the issues she's dealing with now, and a lot of the record seems to be about kind of trying to grapple with or maybe even overcome some of those, you know, old hang-ups as she looks forward and attempts to reach some kind of future happiness. And there you go, that is my review, Pre-Pleasure by Julia Jacqueline. Really great record that I would really recommend. Also, just as one final side note, I'd just like to say a thank you for all of the comments on the last video I did, because all of those were really positive and I really appreciated them. Um, I'm still really excited for that new hoodie record whenever it comes out. I definitely thought we'd have it by now, but uh, whenever it does, I will be talking about it on here. Um, and yeah, that's all, all right. Yeah, I did.